Wow. A boxing fan tells Terrence Crawford to grow some nut and fight Jerron Boots Ennis of Philly. Dang. That's what I want to talk about in this video. Let's talk about. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you come in, subscribe to the channel. I am the best in the business, and it's not even close. Now, interesting dialogue. A fan reached out to Terrence Crawford. I think this was on one of his posts, and it was a picture of Errol Spence for the guy's post. It says, big fan, little bro, but time to let... He misspelled it. But time to let to grow or let you know. Hold on. What did he say? Big fan, little bro, but time to grow some nuts. This is all messed up. Time to grow some nuts and fight boots, Jerron Ennis. You know dang well that's your hardest fight. Man up, buddy bud. Terrence Crawford seen this, and he says, I heard this same song before. It's played out, homie. And that was it. Short but sweet from Terrence Crawford. Now, my thoughts. I mean, I like the Jerron Boots in this fight, so... I don't disagree with whoever the fan that said that. I would love to see that fight. In fact, I think that's probably my top fight for Terrence Crawford at the moment because he wants to fight Canelo Alvarez. I, to me, that's not really, I don't want to see that like that because I've already talked about it and I really don't want to keep talking about it because it's kind of died down, but there is distinct reasons. But for the new fans, I owe that to them in case they didn't catch those past videos. The main reason I don't want to see Crawford versus Canelo is it's, they're just in different weight classes, you know, point blank period. That's the best way. Boxing has somehow shaped itself to and fashioned itself to this weird dynamic where if you can think it, then, you, you know, I know people say like, if you can think it and imagine it, then you can achieve it and all this other goofy stuff. But in boxing, I don't think that should be the case. Just because you think of a fight that you want to see doesn't truly mean that that's a fight we need to see. Terrence Crawford is a welterweight. He has not fought above that, really. And Canelo's fought as high as 175. So to me, it's a disservice to the boxing fan. And it's a disservice to competition for the actual fighters Crawford should be able to fight and see if he can beat people that are closer to his weight like him going up to 154 to fight top names that's not bad that's not that bad of an idea because you've already been a champion in all divisions you've already been undisputed two times and as you finish your career the last chapter of your career you know you just beat Errol Spence Jr. convincingly and it becomes harder and harder for you to make weight as well. So, yeah, to move up a single division to test yourself, this is not uncommon and this is not unheard of. But to move up 21 pounds in one fell swoop because you think you could beat Canelo, it's, you know, it's really not something that tickles my fancy. And that's just being real with you. And I know Crawford is dead set on it. He said he wants it. He wants it, blah, blah, blah. But so did Jermail Charlo, if we're being honest. Jermail Charlo said this and that in the third. And I know Canelo is his own fighter. Jermail Charlo has his own style and Crawford has his own style. I get that totally. But yet and still, the point remains, we seen a guy who moved up 14 pounds, couldn't hurt Canelo, couldn't really do anything with Canelo. So in his mind, there's interviews and clips showtime even released on all access on an epilogue they they released maybe let's say canelo versus caleb plant on one of those epilogues jermel and jamal were sitting next to each other ringside at a canelo fight i want to say it's the plant fight and jamel looks over to his brother jamal big charlo and he's like man i could beat that dude i could beat that and that was at a canelo victory but he was just saying like Nah, I could beat him. I could beat him. And this is what he said. But then again, he had the opportunity and a full fight camp. And then when the fight happened, 
you couldn't beat Canelo with all those, you know, with with the the rules and the weight and everything that you had set in place. So all fighters hopefully are confident in their abilities and they're going to say the same thing. You know, Ryan Garcia told the whole world, he told Mike Tyson to his face that he could beat Gervonta Davis. He got up and got all animated, started shadow boxing and, you know, doing Ali shuffles and all types of stuff. And he said, I could beat Gervonta in two rounds. Give me two rounds. In the second round, Gervonta dropped him. So again, these are more examples of the fighter in their heart. They could truly believe it, but there's levels to it, you know? So Ryan Garcia, maybe he truly believed that Gervonta Davis was going to be some easy work. His speed, his power was going to be something that Gervonta hadn't seen. But when the time came, it didn't play out like that. So again, that's why I don't really fancy the, the Canelo fight for Crawford. Now, fast forward to this guy's comment, fight boots, fight boots. That's a realistic fight to me because Jerron Boots Ennis, he's a guy who, you know, he's a big welterweight. But he is a welterweight. He still makes the weight. He's a switch hitter. He has a lot of people. He's like an urban legend. He, Errol Spence kind of went through this phase where it was tough to get him fights because he was a dangerous up-and-comer. Keith Thurman went through this. And I really want to say in the welterweight division, that's who it's been. It was Keith Thurman, and then it was Errol Spence, and now it's Jerron Boots Ennis. These are the guys that were kind of the urban legends that – it was hard. They were calling out people. Keith Thurman was calling out Floyd Mayweather, saying he wanted to fight Pacquiao much, much sooner than he actually fought Pacquiao. I, I want to up to my, I believe, uh, do, 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 do. right? And now it's fast forward to the future. Errol Spence went through that phase. Now it's Jerron Ennis. He's calling for the big fight. Hasn't been able to get the big, 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 big names. So we want to see it. We want to see. Jerron Boots Ennis get that progressive step up fight and it could be Crawford. So I agree with the fan. You know, I think there's just more reasonable fights. Boots versus Crawford is a reasonable fight. Now, the thing is, Crawford, he oftentimes responds in the comment section to people or, you know, he'll clap back on Twitter, things like that. And he's saying, I heard the same song before it's played out, but that doesn't really work here because you're going to keep hearing the same song over and over and over until you decide to retire. That's pretty much how it works. You're a top fighter. I have him pound for pound number one. Many other people have him pound for pound number one. But you're going to continue to hear people pitch you against other guys that they think are great fights for you, period. So whether you could defeat these guys or you can't, that is the nature of the beast. And that is what you're going to always that's the life of a fighter there's always someone that like wants to fight you especially if you're a great fighter which Crawford definitely is you know there's always going to be people who are chomping at the bit to fight you now some of them and I'm not saying like a journeyman should get a shot at Crawford just because he wants it Jerron Boots Ennis has been paving the way Crawford himself says he could fight Errol Spence says he could fight they were asked about Boots Ennis for the buildup for Spence versus Crawford. So they both know that Boots Ennis can fight because they both have given him his props, right? So at the end of the day, it's like, who does Crawford want to fight? You beat Errol Spence. You and your team have been on record saying you don't even really want the Errol Spence rematch because there's no point. Some fans have said the same thing, like there's no point to have the rematch with Spence because of how the first fight played out. So it was like, what do you, who do you want to fight? Okay, you want to fight Canelo? Canelo says he won't get credit for fighting you. So pick again. Who else? You know? And when you start looking at that list, there's only a handful of names that I think can even challenge Crawford and or make sellable fights with Crawford. Because if it's... I remember at one point, Crawford did that picture with Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya, and Bernard Hopkins. And many people thought that, hey, maybe he tries to go over and do a deal with Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy because they have Alexis Rocha, who was Crawford's mandatory at the point. That, I told you, I hated that fight. I was like, I hope this fight doesn't happen because I told you that Alexis Rocha stands no chance to beat 
Crawford. And then you look at Alexis Rocha's last fight, he didn't look that great and he lost. And he lost to somebody who, to me, is lesser experienced and, you know, really lesser in every department than Crawford. So what would Crawford have done to Alexis Rocha, who had already lost to guy a guy like Rashidi Ellis, who's a great fighter, but uh, Crawford is just super experienced. So that's my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like the Boots fight? Subscribe to my channel. It's free. For all your boxing news, this is your one-stop shop. I am the best in the business, and it's not even close to the mouth. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube, Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a Super Thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hybrid Nation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We working.